everyone, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm here to share with you a fun, easy pastel watercoloring technique featuring stamps from Avery L. These are the fun Woodland Wonders stamp set. I just love the fun, whimsical feel of this stamp set, and I'm going to be using this today in our project. We're going to be doing some very easy to replicate watercoloring techniques that are going to give you pastel effects. Really, really fun. So here's that Woodland Wonder stamp set. You can see how many cute images are included in it. And I'm also going to be using the Sentimental stamp set. I love this fun sentiment stamp set. I love the font. It's absolutely gorgeous. And there's a lot of really fun, simple fonts to go along with it. And these help you create some really fun and custom sentiments. All right, to get started, I'm gonna be creating a four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards. So I've cut a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock and I've scored it at five and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice crease and then I'm gonna put it in my Misty stamping tool. And I'm gonna start stamping my images onto my watercolor paper card. This is gonna be a completely one layer card other than a few embellishments that we'll add at the end. And we're gonna be using this Misty stamping tool to go ahead and stamp all of our images down onto our card. If you don't have the Misty, you could go ahead and use clear blocks or other stamp positioning tools that you prefer, but I'm gonna be using the Misty for this project. I'm going to take my Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Dye Ink to stamp my images. I'm using this ink because it's waterproof, so I can use this with my watercolors to make sure that my impressions won't bleed. I'll go ahead and ink this up good, and then I'll go ahead and stamp the tree right down onto the right-hand side of my card panel. I'll go ahead and give that a nice good press, make sure I get all of the areas of the stamp pushed down onto the paper. And there you can see we've got our trees. Next, I'm gonna take my little critters. I've lined up the little animals along the bottom portion, and I'm gonna be stamping the bird up on that tree branch. I wanted to have the critters stamped along the bottom to look like they're standing in the grass. So I'll go ahead and press those down. And again, I'm using that same Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Dye Ink. Once I have those stamped, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stamps. And then I'm gonna take the little butterfly images that are included in this stamp set and also the flower. I'm gonna be stamping these onto my card as well. And I'm gonna be stamping these all over the background just to kind of fill it in. And I'm also gonna stamp that flower in the bird's hand so you can see there. Once I have everything all stamped down, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment. Now this stamp is bigger than my Misty stamping tool. You could use a larger Misty or a big uh, clear block to hold this down, but I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp it like this. It's okay that it's hanging off. It's gonna stamp completely on my card. I'm using Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink and I'm gonna ink this up really well. And I love this ink. This is brand new for Simon Says Stamp. And I love how this holds the embossing powder so beautifully. It has become my new favorite embossing ink. I'll prep the surface of my watercolor paper with my powder tool just to cut down on any static from the ink that we already applied down onto our card. And I'll go ahead and press this sentiment down onto my card panel. And then I'll cover it with gold embossing powder to go ahead and be able to heat set this and I'll have a gorgeous gold sentiment stamped across the side of my card here. Once I have that embossed, I'm gonna go ahead and start watercoloring. Now I'm gonna show you here how you can create this very easy to replicate watercoloring effect that gives you pastel color tones. For this watercoloring, I'm using Decadent Pies watercolors from Prima. You can use any watercolor sets you like. I'm making sure that I use fairly light colors, although I will be using some darker colors and I'll show you how we go ahead to blend those out to be able to give them a pastel look. But the biggest key for me is that I apply the color along the edge of my image. So you can see here, it's hard to tell with this bunny because I'm using such a light color, but you'll see it better as I go on to the owl. But what I'm doing is I'm just adding basically a line of color along the very edge of where I want the darkest color to be. And then I will blend that out with a clean brush. I have a rag on the side of my screen here, you can't see it, but I'm wiping off my brush. So that way it's just damp with some wet water and it's not very wet because I don't want this to be bleeding too much. And I'm just blending the color out into the white space. So here you can see a better example of what I'm talking about. I add that ink along the very edges and then I blend it out with my clean brush. So that way it fades out into the white areas of this image and gives this a really beautiful pastel appearance. This is super easy to replicate and really, really fun for creating some gorgeous watercoloring effects for your cards and also creating a soft pastel look, which can sometimes be hard to replicate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color using the exact same method that I have talked about here. You'll be able to see how I add the color along the edges and then blend it out with my clean brush. 
I'm gonna repeat this on all of the images and then I will come back in a couple of minutes when we go ahead to start the next portion of the coloring. Alright, so now that we've finished up the coloring on the images, I'm going to go ahead and create my background. I'm using a mop brush here and I'm going to be dabbing on some sponge sugar distress inks into the background of this card just to give it a little bit of color and fill in that white area. I'm dabbing this in a very loose format. I'm making sure to leave open spaces. I'm not coloring the entire panel because I want to give that texture. So I'm just going to apply this down in certain areas, leaving again, like I said, white spaces, and then I'll go ahead and dry this. 
Once I've dried it, I'm going to go ahead and apply a second coat of that sponge sugar distress ink. And I'm going to do this very sparingly. I'm not going to use a whole lot of it because I don't want this to be overpowering. I want to keep that pastel color tone that I've been keep creating in this card. I'll go ahead and apply the ink where I want it and then I'll go ahead and dry that again. And now I'm going to take my distress sprayer. This is a spray bottle that spritzes out really great water droplets in all sorts of different sizes. I'll go ahead and spritz this so that way I have water droplets sprayed over most of the background. I'll go ahead and dry it so that way the water bleaches it to the paper a little bit. And then once I've dried it for just a couple of seconds, I'm going to go ahead and dab off the rest of the water with a rag. And this will just lift off any ink that's sitting there and give this some nice water spot textures. This is a really great way to add really great texture to your backgrounds. All right, so now it's time to finish up this card. I'm going to go ahead and take a sentiment here that is from that same stamp set, that Sentimentals stamp set from Avery L. I'm going to line this up underneath the word celebrate. This is the word happy birthday. I'll go ahead and ink this up using some soft granite ink from Hero Arts. This is a really great gray ink. It matched the little raccoon that I've used in my card perfectly. And I'll go ahead and press that down using my Misty tool. Once I have that done, I'll go ahead and wrap some hemp around the top portion of my card. I love adding the finishing touch of a little bit of baker's twine or hemp or ribbon tied onto my cards. I do it a lot. I'll go ahead and snip this off. I'm using some Tim Holtz scissors there. Those are the Tim Holtz tonic scissors. I'll tie this hemp into a little bow just to go ahead and finish this off. And then once I have that tied down, I'm going to take some Pretty Pink Posh Sparkling Clear sequins. These are the mixed sequins. And I'm just going to glue these down onto my card using some glossy accents. So that's going to do it. Here's the card all finished. You can see how fun that was to create and how we added such gorgeous coloring using a very simple watercoloring technique to create gorgeous pastel color tones. So I hope you've enjoyed and got some inspiration on creating pastel color tones with your watercolors. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below and head on over to the Simon Says Stamp blog where you can get more information on this card including still pictures and products used. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.